Waiting is hard. Today, all over the world, children will be itchy and scratchy as they find it hard to wait for Christmas Day. But why can't I have my presents now? I want them now, they cry. And waiting isn't only hard for children. I'm sure that you are waiting for something just now, too. Take a moment to consider what that might be. It's so hard to wait, perhaps in vain, for a marriage partner, for a child, for the salvation of a loved one, for reconciliation in a relationship, for healing from a disease, for health and hope. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Day after day, nothing to show for it. Just waiting. It can feel like an eternity. It can hurt like hell. And indeed, hell is just what it is like, for hell is an eternity of waiting in vain. Waiting can be a foretaste of the terrors of hell, for hell is waiting and waiting without hope. We'll spend the next five days in the company of two people who knew how to wait with hope. Had there been Oscars back then, I would have nominated them for Best Supporting Actor and Actress in the Bible Story. First, today and tomorrow, Simeon. Perhaps an older man. We know only three things about Simeon. He was righteous and devout, a real believer in the promises of God, and he was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was on him. The Holy Spirit, who prepared a body for the Son of God, also prepared a people to wait for him. For the Holy Spirit is the personal spirit, the third person of the Godhead, and he puts a hopeful waiting into the hearts of the people of God. Think particularly about those words, waiting for the consolation of Israel. All his life, Simeon had known the promises of God, and he waited for God to do what he had promised to do. Day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, he waited. He watched. He prayed. He hoped. He trusted. He waited for consolation. There was so much sadness. There were such depths of misery and so many tears, a plethora of pain. Disappointment was everywhere. People hoped for life and found death. They longed for strength and were given sickness. In place of harmony and peace, there was strife and hatred. All around, Simeon saw this. And he didn't just see it, he felt the pain. He longed for consolation, for God to console, to bring comfort to a world in pain. And he longed for consolation for Israel, the people of God, men and women who trusted the promises of God. Centuries earlier, God had promised to Abraham a seed or offspring through whom the world would be blessed. Simeon longed for this. Many years had passed since God promised to David an heir who would be king of all the world. Simeon believed that one day this king would come. He knew that this king in David's line, the seed of Abraham, would be the one who would deal with sin, who would defeat death, who would destroy the works of the devil. But he had not yet come. And so Simeon waited. That king has come. Tomorrow we will watch Simeon in his joy, but we too wait. We wait for this great sin-bearing king to return in glory. We long for him to come back. We know that all our groaning, every tear, each sadness will finally be ended only when he comes. And so we wait. Waiting is hard. It was hard for Simeon. He must have heard a little voice in his ear tempting him to doubt. Will God really do this? Are you sure? 
It doesn't look like it just now. Think again about what you are waiting for, and then learn from Simeon how to turn waiting from hell into hope, how to wait with hope. Trust that God has never broken a word yet, and he never will. And like Simeon, pin all your hopes on the word of God and the Christ who fulfills every promise of God. Savior. 
we praise you for the unfathomable power of love in the heart of the Holy Spirit, by whose agency the Son took human flesh to be our Savior. Give us, we pray, a deep sense of how much we need saving, and a correspondingly intense gratitude for Jesus, our Savior. We ask it in his name. Amen. <laughs>